The entire chess world is in utter shock because we just witnessed one of the most incredible chess performances in living memory. With the white pieces this game is the world number one Magnus Carlsen. It's the super bet rapid and blitz. This is day five and leading the tournament is this guy Wei Yi. He's in first as mentioned so this game critical. This would decide who wins the entire tournament basically winner of this takes all the marbles strap yourself in what a game what a performance what a tournament knight f3 on the board from magnus carlson way Yi goes d5 and now magnus goes for a setup that has every junior chess coach all over the world applauding this is how you get your king to safety move four what a player but he's given the entire center here what's the idea well after d3 Knight c6, we see it. In true hypermodern style, Magnus fights for the center now, and Wei Yi exchanges the pawns and takes off the queens here. Magnus Carlsen falls asleep in his chair at such a boring middle game that we've got the prospect of, but luckily his father, Henrik Carlsen, is on hand to lob a glass of water over his head. Magnus is back awake. Bishop g4. Don't go pawn h3 and allow a capture, then a knight d4. c3, an important move order nuance. Now we get knight f6. Now h3 is fine, and the bishop retreats to e6. Magnus is like, come back. I really want to eat you. Wei Yi is like, no way. Ye shall not have my bishop. He's moved it already three times. Keep your eye on it, because after knight d2, h6, the knight hopping back, cast Castle's queen side, he's not yet done moving this bishop. Now both players lost some time here with the minor pieces, but queen's off the board, no king is getting hunted, so the tempos are less important. Rookie one now from Magnus. There is a top player move. Why would you leave the only open file on the board? Well, watch how Magnus now masterfully manoeuvres these minor pieces. Bishop e6 from Wei Yi first. That's four bishop moves with the queen's bishop in 14 moves. He wins a hamper and dinner for two. What a player. Bishop f1 from Magnus, and this is a standard re-manoeuvre. That one was biting on its own pawn, so it looks for work on the queen side. Knight d7, more great chess headed for c5 and white can play very directly here with pawn to b4 but magnus goes knight p uh, b3 p3 b3 more positional idea what does way ye do to fight against it pawn to a5 he wants a4 kick the knight then go knight c5 and no a4 in response of course or this knight drops off the board Magnus has to fight back. He starts with bishop e3. a4 comes, and now this is really classy. Very good positional lesson. Why not go knight c5? Well, this trade helps black and not white because suddenly black is first to the punch on the d file and the big problem is that it's very hard for white to challenge due to this pressure down here if you ever push you're in trouble magnus notices this so that's why knight b to d2 played instead and now way Yi does not go the right way he should push with pawn f5 it pressures the center there could be threats of f4 here and basically you look to open the scope of this bishop either because white takes or you push on with f4 using g3 as a hook but it was missed instead bishop f8 such a natural looking idea but now magnus goes b4 clamping on this square and the top engine move is to come back with bishop g7 but how do you play that as a human not easily so way Yi plays pawn takes on passant bellows it at the top of his lungs in a French accent as the top professionals do. Magnus plays pawn recaptures and look at the A-file attack that he's now opened up. Of course Wei sees this but this is his plan. Bishop c5, he finally gets
gets his bits to the c5 square. Magnus could check immediately, but doesn't. He takes off the bishop. This one recaptures, and now he pushes with b4. A very harmonious pawn structure when you've got the light squared bishop. This knight now retreats to d7. Why didn't it come into d3? Well, then there's rook e3 and the knight is getting trapped. It can jump to b2, but then it runs out of squares. Long story short, white starts steamrolling and the knight drops in many lines. So that's why knight d7 played. Now we see knight c4. Magnus would love to see an exchange. His light squared sniper becomes a monster. So instead of exchanging, Wei Yi just covers his center. Never play f6, says Ben Feingold. But here it's good. You support the middle, give this bishop some runaround scope, and after rook a8 check, finally played, Wei Yi blocks with this knight. Best move. B5 was on the cards in many of these variations. Rook e to a1. Magnus doubling on the a-file here, and it looks like you've left the tactic on. Why can't you take? Bishop captures, knight b6, there's a rude awakening. Well, aha, Magnus would have the Zug, an in-between move to check, force knight d7, and he stands better with things like knight h4. So that wasn't played. Instead, we see the move of knight to b6 immediately, and it is necessary. You get this ugly pawn structure, double b's over there, but at least you get rid of that very powerful knight on c4, improve your own bad one and now have a look at Magnus's knight on f3. This is masterful maneuvering. He starts with knight h4, bishop f7, covers that weakened pawn and now knight to g2. King c7 breaks this pin looking to attack the rook. Knight e3 eyeing the important light squares in the position and Wei Yi goes wrong here but Magnus doesn't punish it. What does he do? He plays knight c6, the most natural move in the world. And the reason this is bad is Magnus can take, and however you recapture, doesn't make a difference. There's knight g4, and you cannot cover this f6 pawn. Or if you push it, then there's this pawn dropping. No good. So these are the problems, but it was missed. Magnus goes rook uh, eight to a3. You would write that as if you were scoring. He wants to keep the pieces on the board here. Now we see rook d7 preparing to double. The computer poops its pants because it says rook a8 is really good. But Magnus goes uh, bishop c4. Very natural position idea, uh, positional idea. Stumbling, stumbling, apologies. Bishop captures here, way too excited. Knight takes back and we can see see the difference and the reason that Magnus has an advantage because after b5 played knight e3 Magnus can get to the outpost on d5 but Wei Yi doesn't have the same option and he's got the worst pawn structure Magnus in the driving seat we get knight e7 to cover this knight jump here now rook to a8 back Magnus offering this exchange of rooks what does Wei Yi do picks it up moves it across intimates to take but doesn't he says just teasing magnus in a whispered voice both players have a giggle the rook's still on the board here knight g4 played arbiter unimpressed two pawns attacked how do you defend well way ye has to play the miserable knight to g8 the emperor over here shaking his head you disgust me back on your starting square and it's move 35 what a waste of space rook takes on d8 now played by magnus he does let a pair leave the board and now he could say play something like this attack the pawn but he goes king f1 to bring that monarch into the game h5 Wei Yi sets up the old bathtub, kicking back this knight. It's headed for d5. Now we see knight e7, king e2, and the best move here is, say, rook c8 or king d6. Some kind of waiting idea. Make Magnus prove something. But Wei Yi plays pawn f5. You're so keen to push pawns when you're low on time here. And the reason this is bad, Magnus misses it, is that rook a5 hits the pawn, King b6 covers right, but then there's this explosive c4 move. And the basic idea is that after takes, 
you weakened the e5 pawn when you pushed f5. So these are the kind of lines which ensue and white's doing well and stuff like this. There are different ways to play it out, but not the best move. However, f3 from Magnus, the player's low on time. This is over the board blitz chess. H4 now played, didn't have to be. There were other waiting moves, but this one isn't so bad. You shatter the structure and this is the follow up point. Once you attack, very hard to defend. If knight g2, never click down this line. Okay, the computer says just bring the uh, king in, slow play it, that kind of thing. You've put the knight in a bad spot is the problem. But okay, Magnus takes here. We get pawn recaptures and he hits the newly opened g file. King d6, Wei Yi takes a time out to improve his king. Such an important piece in the end game. Now we get rook g5, hits the pawn twice, and if you advance, well then knight g4. And there's big problems with this one. I mean, I didn't explore knight c6, it's a different game, right? If king e6, I didn't explore this, okay, h5, then you save that one. Different games, we'll stick with what happened. Wei Yi takes on h4 here, and now Magnus, takes on f5 and starts looking at the ceiling. Poker face, I wonder if he'll take it. Act like nothing bad just happened. Why didn't Wei Yi take this one? Well, Magnus would have gone to Forktown. Population Wei Yi, that's a loss of the game. So we don't see knight takes here. Instead, Wei Yi carries on gobbling, makes a gobble gobble noise as he takes the second pawn. Magnus checks, king c7, rook e6, hits two points, so knight c6, saves itself, covers the e5 pawn, but now Magnus finally hits the d5 square that he's been flirting with for so long. King d7, rook g6, and now after rook h1, knight f6 check, Wei Yi goes the wrong way with the king. He's defending like a lion here, but he should come to the queen side. Stay with these pawns. He runs this way, looks natural to start attacking things, but it allows Magnus knight e4 and some nasty threats like this and taking the weakened b7 pawn. So that's why king f7. But now check the king back. We get some tickle. The king comes back. Rook d6 here. And after rook h2 check, king d3, rook h1, maybe looking for some check behind action. Magnus now lands this check on d7 and wins a pawn. Why not, by the way, go king e7? Well, then there's this rook d5, whoops, rook d5 move. You hit these two points. That's why the knight can't go to a7 and cover, or this one drops. So, okay, this played. Now check. King moves, pawn drops here, you're hitting a second and it's just so difficult to play. How do you drum up counterplay? Well, the very natural move was played by Wei Yi. He lifts up his king and slides it into f5. Heading for f4, f3, counterplay, counterplay, but there's a big problem with this move. Can you see what Magnus played here to finish the game on the spot he lands knight g3, check and picking up the rook next turn. What a game from Magnus Carlsen and what a storming performance. I'll get to more of these games in the coming days. It was truly special. He wins the tournament. The audience start bleating like goats just as he finishes his game. I mean, this was something else. You've really got to say it right. It truly, truly was. But way ye take about. No one's pushed Magnus like that in a long long time. I hope you enjoyed. Smash subscribe if you did. And for another incredible Magnus game from this tournament, check out the video on screen. Thanks for watching and see you soon.